TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it? Little warning screen. Possibility we might need it. Don't forget we are on twitch.com. That's where you can catch the live streams. Usernames at the bottom of the screen. We also got a Patreon where we post seven to ten times a week. Oh, to me. Uh... <laughs> The link to all of that is down in the description, man. This is Police Interceptors. I don't know what season, nor do I know what episode. Let's just get into it. You feel me? Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Last year, there were more than 300,000 assaults on police officers involving deadly weapons. This isn't just because criminals are getting more violent. It's also down to the fact that it's easier to get hold of dangerous items than it used to be. I think just the access to any weapons. Nothing that they showed was real YouTube. Weapons is, you know, it's got worse over the time. You can order a taser off the internet, for, you know, get delivered from America, work its way through customs, and, and people got these, they carry them on the streets openly. You know, when I first started policing, you had to know people who knew somebody who knew somebody to get that sort of stuff, but now you can just order it off the internet. It's early evening, and interceptors Mike Jenno Jennings and Jim Hunt are out in the unmarked crime car. What is the make and model of the vehicle ever? Small white, white. paddy style van. van. Roger, Middlewood Street, will do. As specialists in tactical takedowns, they've been brought in to help stop a van driven by a man suspected of carrying a gun. We're going to exercise our powers of stop and search initially because we suspect or we believe that they've got criminal property in that vehicle. Are they armed? Are these interceptors or just regular? That's as much as we know at the moment. Like armed as a former army tank driver, Jim knows all about dangerous weapons. Unlike his partner tonight, Jeno, whose biggest worry as a supermarket manager was an out-of-date yogurt. Tonight, <laughs> why did narrator just get on his ass like that? Leave bro alone. Tonight, their main concern is the white van. It's being tracked. Never mind, it's valid. By another interceptor who's directing them to its location. It's a game of chess, really. It sounds like the vehicle's stationary. Whether it's attended or unattended at the moment, we don't know. We're going to um, get to the general area where we're in good striking distance and, uh, and wait for further direction, really. Minutes later, they get a call that the suspect has got into the van and driven off. Do you want the blues on, mate, or no? It's time to strike. Andy, we're sticking the blues on, mate, to make a bit of progress. Right, the vehicle's on the move. He's heading a little bit away from us um, in a place called Sydney Road. Another crime car has pulled in behind Jim and Jeno, and en route they meet up with fellow interceptor Chris Bucko Buckley. Now they have three cars in convoy. They're ready to carry out a tactical pursuit and containment, or TPAC. Where a trio of police vehicles blocking a car from the front, rear and side. First, they have to get to the van. So we're just playing a bit of catch-up, really, and then um, hopefully, when they call the strike in, we'll be close enough to uh, to respond, really. But there's a problem. Well, heading back towards crew. Dive off here. The van is heading right towards them, okay. and as the plan is to get behind it to carry out the T-Pack, if the driver spots the cop cars, it could jeopardise the whole operation. Yeah, whereabouts are you at the moment? Uh, right, so you got to stay incognito. Um, we're on Acer Avenue, just got into the estate, so we're not going to um, show out ever. 
Yeah, yeah, we know where you are, um. Jim and his colleagues on the strike team will have to stay out of sight for the moment. We're all trying to scramble out the way, really, and um, stay as covert as possible. Um, so the last thing we want to do is to spook the driver and for him to have it on his toes into the town centre, or potentially as well, um, lose the evidence in the vehicle. If you can start closing it towards Bentley. Towards Bentley, Roger. Ten minutes later, and the job's back on. Lights on. Is it going towards Middlewich or towards Nantwich, over? Yeah, the vehicle is currently Middlewich towards Lake Hospital. Roger. We're just going past the Grand Junction. We're a little bit far away, but... Um... My buddy don't even... He has no clue that he's been... <laughs> There's a whole tactical unit uh, spawning on him. The Geno's driving. We should be there um, in no time at all. As soon as we go 5.30, I'll turn the sirens off. So the other cars will come from behind us. Um, hopefully, um, Bucko in the marked car will be the little bus yeah. vehicle. And the, uh, the other one marked will go to the side. Geno's blue light driving soon gets them close to the suspect van. Perhaps too close, as the undercover car behind the van has seen their blues. Kill him. Kill him. Yeah, we are all uh, lights off now. Up ahead, the van keeps at the same speed. It seems the driver hasn't noticed Jeno's lights, although Jeno has spotted him. There it is. Up is ahead. It? Up ahead. There's the van, just going under the bridge. That's got to be it, hasn't it? All yeah. three T-Pack cars need to get directly behind the van before making their move. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, keep us updated then. Um, yeah, yeah. And there's a few cars to get past first. And that one. Which he'll have to do without attracting the van driver's attention. I can see it. Yeah, we've got eyeball on that vehicle towards me, Mr. Roger. Back up, Mr. So what was they doing to get them out the way? Finally, they're all behind the van. Lads, um, obviously we're going to come up to the, uh, the lit section here. I don't know, if this van got that firearm in there, he's cooked. Literally. But he's... If you're in agreement, that's probably going to be the best place to do it. Roger, next straight section if we can, Roger. Everyone's in position, but will the van driver fall into their trap? Absolutely. Are part of a three-car After some tricky maneuvers around the streets of Crewe, all three cars are in position. The trap. I don't know why they be trying to recap us to death on this. Show. Has been set. It's time to T-pack. Right, guys, move up, move up, move up. The marked car gets in front of the van. An unmarked car gets alongside it, while Geno blocks it in at the rear. It's got nowhere to go. The driver is immediately cuffed, as he's believed to be carrying a gun and they give him a thorough search. I feel like they did just went against procedure. There's no firearm restraint cops here that I've seen so far. Really. Keep his face up. Rome towards yeah. you. Turn your face either yeah. way, mate. Okay. But they don't find anything on He put his whole palm on dude's cheek. That's different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The same can't be said of the van, though. Looks like two 9 mil rounds. Cellophane on the passenger seat, we see. There are two bullets on the passenger seat, and that's not all. There's a big carving knife under the driver's seat. Unless the driver's a chef, that's a deadly weapon. Why he had a bullet wrapped up like that? Look, two rounds at the moment. He's trapping to be live. So we'll leave those in situ for the moment. We've still got a more detailed search to carry on at the moment, so uh, it's a good result. Along with the knife and the bullets, We'll take a seat in our car. Jim's found something he suspects might also be a weapon. I've tried to see if it's a taser, but I can't see if it's... Um... That, that's a normal torch. Is there anything else in the vehicle? I promise you there's nothing else it's in the like vehicle. A high power. What is in the vehicle? What? Nothing. 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 This is a torch. See how you tried to walk them into that trap? This why. This why when they get you, just be quiet. Plausible, den well not plausible deniability, but you can deny it in court. Look how he tried to walk him into this trap. He almost fell for it a lot. 
That, that's the number two. Is there anything else in the vehicle? I right promise here. you there's nothing else in the vehicle. What is in the vehicle? What? Nothing. Right there. Nothing. What is in the vehicle? I'd just be quiet. Nothing. This is a torch. Um, it says a defender. Um, I've had actually a taser disguised in a, uh, a so-called defender torch before. Two metal probes across there and you get them disguised as mobile phones. Any inconspicuous object really. But on close inspection it doesn't appear to be a taser. But uh, what I'll do, I'll just try on my colleague here. I'll put the torch on. <laughs> and if, he, if he collapses in a ball, of, uh, a ball of snot on the floor then we obviously find a taser, don't we? Whether or not the torch is a deadly weapon, the knife and the bullets are enough to see the van driver arrested. A good nick after a textbook tea pack. It was all right, we, we got it stopped. There was an element of surprise. He literally did an emergency stop, which tactical contact. Well, lucky I did, we didn't crash into the back of him to repair. Chest pumps all around. I believe this pump. <laughs> I'm allergic to later. Quiet. <laughs> the man was. Big fist bump looks so uncoordinated. Arrested for possession of a knife and ammunition. The bullets were confiscated and no further action was taken against the driver. All in all, it's been a good evening. No further action was taken against the driver on the on the on the bullets. Evening for the interceptors, except for one thing. The van's got a flat battery. This is police no and it's fine. It's <laughs> Go on then. It's all in a night's work for Geno. It's Friday morning, and interceptors Dan Halliwell and Gordy Morris are part of a team about to simultaneously raid two flats linked to drug activity. In charge. This is a pretty high octane episode, ain't it? They done found two bullets, which no one was investigated for. Now they're about to do a raid. Of today's operation is Sergeant Danny Haddock. Operation Stella, we're all participating in today. Uh, we're looking to execute two misuse of drugs act warrants at two addresses. First address, that's going to be team one, uh, and the second address we're looking at, both very close to each other, 60, 70 yards in between. Gordy and Dan's job today is opening the door of flat number one, interceptor style with a big red key. So well, let's get them in hard, fast and safe, and once we've got them under control, we can do it at our pace then. Uh, the MOE is going to be... Freaky ass uh, commissioner. He said, get them in fast and hard. Then once they're in the control, we'll do it at our pace. <laughs> a little freaky self. Boy, they took a, a rhino pill, didn't he? Before the raid? What's going on? Dan and Gordy, we've run the book and I've said one strike. No, no pressure. <laughs> right, anyone else got any questions? Right, everyone enjoy it. Be safe. Joking aside, this is serious business and Dan and Gordy know what needs to be done. Our role today is to do the method of entry, to force entry to the premises and initially go in and uh, secure any persons in there. KFC loving Dan's a big fan of the Jason Bourne movies. While Gordy prefers yippee ki -yay to Die Hard. And they're expecting to do some action moves today. Both good movies. Give it a good welly with a smile. We'll know on the first hit. So we believe it's a wooden door with a little bit of glass in it. I've got every faith that you'll hit it in one. Though the last time they dealt with a door, it took a lot more than one hit to get it open. Stop it. Change! We had to rotate the hitting of the, of the door, really. It's embarrassing. We caused that much damage. The, the outbuilding was unsafe. But if we've got to get in, we'll get in. But one hit. Want it. Want it. Want it, wonder. Getting in quickly is vital as it prevents people in the property from having the time to dispose of any illegal substances they might have. Come on! The interceptors also have to avoid being spotted, but a bunch of cops on a. Not gonna lie, man. They be looking dumb. I, this, to me, like. 
put, like put a long sleeve on or something. Like put it like just put your uniform on. The interest like this right here is not a good look, buddy. I don't know what it is about this to me that, that it's just not sitting well. Interceptors also have to avoid being spotted, but a bunch of cops on a small housing estate stick out like a sore thumb. Both entry teams get into position and ready to go. And then they get the go ahead. Go, go. It's time to move. Gordy's got the big red key. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, first try. Stay right What's going on here? See? They quickly nick three people. But we're here for a reason. We'll get you dressed safe, and then we're going to conduct the search. Gordy's done his job perfectly. It's good. He went in first time. That was the main thing. Three persons on, on the premises, all secured. Didn't have time to get rid of anything, so yeah, it's good. It's what we want, really. <laughs> With the first flat safe and secure, Sergeant Haddock goes to check if there's anything fishy in the other flat that was raided. What have we got there? 70 yards different. The search is in full swing. And they've already found some drugs. A big bag of cannabis. First seizure under the bed, that's cannabis, so... It's a start. Back at the first flat, Gordy and Dan have joined the search team. So it's just a case of now, see, see what we can recover. Um, anything, any offences that come to light, we'll deal with those responsible, whether it's all of them or individually. But first, Gordy has to put his advanced driver skills to the test. Oh. There you go, you got your headlights on. <laughs> You're right. Is it right. No, no, it's quick this. Well do. Yeah, you start that way, we'll work around. It's the search uncovers a bag of cannabis in one of the bedrooms. It's not enough for y'all to be there. Its owner is going to be taking a trip to the cop shop for further questioning. Are you coming down today, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. The search team in the second flat has had more success. Back at Northwich Nick, Gordy and Sergeant Haddock go through all their evidence, including one particularly scary find. As you can see what we've got here, this is the, uh, the worrying thing we've recovered. If that was pulled on you, you, uh, you would think twice about it. Don't you, Gordy, but I'd be uh, getting shot in the back, I wouldn't be getting shot in the face. Obviously, there was, there was no intelligence that we had that there was going to be firearms at addresses, but like that, it's a, it's a 177 pellet gun. It's reasons like that that we wear the kit we do when we go into these addresses. We've recovered Class B drugs here. Uh, the pellet gun illegal? There's not dealers amounts there, but again, if people sitting off in the dresses will often smoke cannabis. A man from the second flat was later given a cannabis warning, as was the man arrested in the first property. No charges were brought over the BB gun found in flat two. So are we all on the same page that this is a waste of the taxpayer's dollar? I guess you gotta go into every little... Y'all woke up at 5 a.m. for nothing. But two warnings and a, and a, and a, and a, and a. no further action was taken against the other people detained in the raids. <laughs> Even though the number of accidents involving drink yeah, drivers on Britain's road has dropped by a third in the last decade, drink drivers still cause more than 200 deaths each year. Less than no wonder it's a crime that makes most interceptors blood boil. No, I've got no time for drink drivers. Um, if you can afford to get drunk, afford a taxi or walk home. Um, you don't deserve any sympathy whatsoever. The heartache it causes, even for the driver themselves, when they lose a life or they're seriously injured, the effect it has on people, and they just don't think about that. They can't do. I'm um, happy to take drink drivers off the road all day long. All day long. It's a rainy night in Cheshire and interceptor Ian Blanchard is single crewed in the traffic car on the lookout for dodgy drivers. But what he's most worried about right now is the weather. It's a heavy rain, a lot of standing water. Nobody wants to go out when it's like this. I don't want to go out when it's like this, but I'm getting paid for it. <laughs> Along with being out on patrol in the rain, drink drivers and people using their phones while driving 
10-year veteran Ian also doesn't like sushi. Who doesn't like sushi? I love sushi. And he soon gets a call about a very fishy sounding driver. Westbound, sir, a vehicle that's reported all over the place. Hotel Tango 28, Warrington Town Centre, we'll start making. Um, there's a call coming from a member of the public. Vehicles reported all over the place on the motorway. Got out at the junction and he's now urinating against the car. So he's got out to uh, relieve himself. So whether he's had a few drinks and his bladder's got a bit uh, full. So hopefully we'll catch him driving if he is drunk. Drink driving's bad enough, but in conditions like this. The person who called in to report the drunk driver has continued following him, and now sounds like he's doing even more to help. Apparently he's an informant and tried to block him in. Two eight received. All right, so the informants tried to block this uh, driver in. This driver's then took a section, drove over the grass verge, and continued driving with his lights off. The informant is driving an orange minibus, easy enough to spot, even in conditions like this. Calling him as an informant, I mean, I guess it's correct, but like, it's kind of like, dang. Right, what's... It's a, a concerned citizen. This here. The minibus pulls in to let Ian pass. And he stops right in front of the suspect car. He looks drunk. Hello. Yeah. Just come and join me for a minute, please. Sorry. Have you had anything to drink? No, not at all. Thank you. Right. Your words are slurred at the minute. Have you had anything to drink? No, I haven't. All right. Come and uh, take a seat with us for a minute, please. The man's denying he's been boozing. Just take a seat there for me. But Ian doesn't believe a word of it. When was your last drink of alcohol? Uh, uh, it's fairly recently. I apologise. When you say fairly recently, how recent? An hour. About an hour ago. All right, I'm going to ask you for, sir, to provide a sample of breath for analysis, OK? Sorry? Pay attention to what I'm saying, please. Yes, sir. OK, can you look at me? Thank you. Make a taxi around. From what I see, buddy, I, I, can, I can probably tell you the outcome. You're going to jail. <laughs> You're done. On this part of the tube with your lips. Keep They're probably going to find a little class A booger sugar on you, on, in you, too. Blowing until I ask you to stop, OK? And blow. This blow doesn't seem to know if he's blow. coming or going. Blow. Blow. No, you're sucking. Blow. Keep going. Keep going. No, listen. Sorry. Right. You're not doing it. No, no, sorry. OK? My, my it is an offence I failed to provide. Take a deep breath and blow. Keep going. 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 Keep... That's good. Thank you. Second time around, he manages to blow rather than suck, and it's a shocking result. Okay, you provide a reading of 125. Okay, the legal limit's 35. You're under arrest for drink driving. He's three and a half times over. Three and a half is crazy. Over the limit, but he doesn't seem to. He don't seem three and a half though. Too bothered. Did, I hurt you? Did you hurt? You could have. Did I? That's not the point, is it? I don't. Know. The man's nicked and no, taken off to custody did. for a second test. Just put your arms out in front of you like this, yeah, please. Really no, no, no. Bro Sorry, thought, just relax though. Bro thought he was a Wakandian, would he? Bro was, no, brother. It's like this in front of you. What's your head getting in? Yeah. Wait, hotel time goes through. Chris is a fart. And it's all thanks to minibus driver Leon, who first spotted the car and dialed 999. I was travelling up um, the M56 back towards Chester and I come up against this car. Um, he was travelling really slowly, about 10 miles an hour. I stayed behind and put my hazard lights on. He looked like uh, the dude that don't talk. What's his name? <laughs> he do the miming, Mr. Dude, what's his name? And I called the police because um, something didn't seem right. Um, while I was on the phone to the police, he was uh, weaving out between the lanes, um, third lane and first lane, doing 10, 30 miles an hour. He switched his lights off. So dangerous on the road. Thanks very much indeed. How has he managed to turn it here? Has he just uh, spun it round, has he? I, I was following him up this road and he tried to turn around and go back the other way and I blocked him in with the bus. Brilliant. So he couldn't get out. Super. And I saw you coming up the street then. Back at the station, the Nick driver still seems worse for wear. You've got them on the wrong feet. Even working out left. 
Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Mr. Bean, there you go. And right, Dude, this is, is a bit tricky. Just walk in here and you can sit, take a seat and put it on in there. Is that Carl Pilkington? No. Apparently the driver's been out celebrating passing his exams. He's unlikely to have as much success with the intoximeter. Right. Don't call gone God now. Your lowest reading is 98. The man later pleaded guilty to drink driving. He was disqualified for 24 months and given a fine of 600 pounds. Ian's happy to have taken him off the road tonight. And you've got people out driving a car. It's just doesn't bear thinking about what can happen really. But it's always these people that walk away. And it's the uh, the good old innocent people that end up suffering with it. So yeah, I'm glad that uh, the informants give us that information. Stop with them. Yeah. That's Carl Pilkington. Ain't no way. He's off the road. That's the main thing. Coming up. Every Friday and. Every Friday and Saturday, the interceptors park up the patrol cars and head out in the big blue van. All aboard to make sure Cheshire's movers and groovers have a safe and crime-free night out. Get a, a mixture of receptions from the public. A, a lot of people like to see the van. We always get a lot of people approaching us, saying hello, um, a lot of selfie requests. Uh, and it does, it, it, I think it reassures people if they're on a night out. But this, uh, this is the highlight of his week. The police are there looking after him. It's the early yeah. hours, and the blue van is en route to help out some colleagues who've nicked two men spotted on CCTV allegedly taking drugs. Leading the team is Sergeant Johnny Marsden. Uh, we've got another patrol being directed to two lads who look like they've been uh, snorting white powder, most likely the drug choice uh, cocaine. The cameraman's seen one of them put it in one of the pockets and we've got the two that's insane cctv picking up all of that <laughs> you can't even do a bump skeezy on here males detained the two suspect sniffers have been stopped in a shopping precinct in chester city center johnny and fellow have been stopped in a shopping precinct in chester city center johnny and fellow interceptor jim hunt are going to help out And after a stroll through the streets and a quick chat with some party people. You had a good night. <laughs> Sound like my three year old kid there, always asking me for a piggyback. They meet up with their colleagues who've stopped and cuffed two men. There's two males in cuffs already on arrival. We've got any drugs on them? They've both been seen by CCTV uh, passing over white powder. The man in the dark jacket is still to be searched. But his mate in the parker has already had a once over, and as he's clean, he's free to go. Though he seems keen to stick around. No, brother, get out of there. I'm not sticking around. Hey, I'm down the street. That way. Can I just speak to these officers? Just just for two seconds. I will, I will. absolutely. All I want to see is okay. what happens to him. As okay. soon as I see that, I'll leave. Mate, no, no, you're going that fella, her eyes. No, just give me two seconds. No, no, go on. No, no, wait, wait. Oh, you want to go to jail? You... No, no, because he's got my keys as well. Just, All right, well, we'll get the keys. Just go no, away from the no, officers no, no, while they're doing, no, mate. You're saying too much. Why does he got your keys? Okay. I, 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 I'm not, I'm not going in. Mate. I'm not going in. I just stand over there. I'll, I'll stand and over don't, here. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Nigga, anywhere near us. Okay, mate. While Jim has been dealing, they gave him the utmost chances. He put two hands on an officer like this, and he wasn't face down on the ground in Chicago. Boy, you, your arm would have been broke. <laughs> With the reluctant lever, Johnny has searched his bouffon buddy and has found something. So what's that? Unopened. It isn't hair product. I've got no idea. No idea. I'll pass it one fine time. Somebody's put that in my pocket. So they found what looks like a wrap of cocaine in the lad's back pocket. And Johnny soon discovers something else on the other side. No. So who's put that in your front pocket then? No idea. I would suggest that's a controlled drug, wouldn't you? Try to use an excuse of somebody else put it in my pocket. Isn't gonna wash, is it? Have you had any drug offences in the past? No. no. Am I going on my way or am I sticking with you guys tonight? You might be, yes. 
Along with claiming someone's put the powder in his pocket, the lad says he doesn't have any previous for drugs. But Johnny decides to do a quick check just in case. Any idea? Do me PNC and niche checks, please, on the male found with a white powder in his pocket. And it's not good news. You got previous possession, Class B, amphetamine. So you've been stopped for drugs before in the Class B? Past. Who's so it seems to me that you couldn't lie straight in bed at the moment. You're presenting as if you're drugged. So we've got a duty of care to you now. If I send you off on your way now and something happens, then it's my fault that you're in this state. So the safest thing to do is you will come with us into custody, we will look after you, and we'll ask you some questions about what's gone on tonight and the items you've been found with. And that's the downside of coming out in Chester with drugs in your pocket, young man. So the lad with the suspicious substances is off to the cells, while his mate is given a dispersal notice, which means he has to leave the town centre straight away. Have a look at that map. Yeah. That's why you're not allowed to go for the next 48 hours. That's fine. Can I, can I just ask something? So obviously, like I said, I've not got an address currently. Marvin lives out of Chester. He's got the house key. He's letting me, letting me sleep on his couch until I fly out tomorrow. The chap is claiming that he's catching a plane in the morning and his bag is at his mate's place. So he needs to get in to get his stuff. But the cops are going to keep the keys in case they decide to search the suspect's flat. You can go and wait at his address. These officers will book this young man in and then they'll come back to the address with the key and check it. Now I'm homeless for the year. No, you're not. I am. You're homeless for about an hour. An hour. The man with the powder is taken off to the nick, but his mate, despite being told in no uncertain terms that he needs to leave, hasn't quite got the message. You've been served with a dispersal notice. And, 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 come on, come on down the stairs then. Absolutely. And that booger sugar beating him down, ain't it? <laughs> go ahead, go. We understand that. I'm just Let's asking. go down the stairs. Just... Mate, Please, come on. I, I happily walk down the stairs. Come on, then. Let's go. After you. Come on. <laughs> go, otherwise you're going to get locked up, mate, no, OK? Absolutely. You go to the address. I, I'm, I'm literally just trying to confirm what the best way to go about this Well, is. the best thing for you now is, is a dispersal He's notice has been served. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, required yeah. to leave immediately. Yeah, no. You're going out the town centre that way, along Watergate Street. Do you understand me? Absolutely. OK? Sir. Go no, to that, that, that address now, mate. and wait there. Okay. That's all you have to do. But you'll be there. To Did they just walk past the camera embraced in a long... Go no, no, that, to that, that, that address now, mate. and wait there. Okay. Communal kiss? That's all you have to do. But you'll be there. It's as simple as that. Turn no, around, I won't mate. be there. Okay. That officer no, no, will be there no, later. That way. You're going that way, mate. Down the Watergate Street. Don't come back into the town centre, fella. Finally, Jim is free of his Parker-clad problem and hopes that'll be the last he'll see of him. One's been locked up for possession of drugs and the other one well, obviously uh, hasn't anymore, got any on him. But um, it, it may well be that he's, um, he's snorting his drugs and, uh, and that's, the way, um, that's why he's acting like the way he is. So, uh, Thanks, I'm surprised y'all didn't do a uh, drug swipe. Um, hopefully he'll go home, but we'll see. The man who was arrested later pleaded guilty to possession of cocaine and was fined £155, including costs. No further action was taken against his friend, and we don't know if he managed to catch his flight the next day. That'd be like a lure. While all interceptors love putting in a door. or stinging a suspect car, their bread and butter is stopping dodgy looking motors. And often the most minor issue can turn into something much more significant. And people are moan as well and say, why are you pulling them over for a light out? Surely you've got better things to do. It's always the classic. Why aren't you catching the burglars? Why aren't you catching the robbers? Well, our best jobs come from stuff like that. Minor traffic events. A little light out could be you put your head in the window to talk to them, you can smell alcohol on the breath. Mm. Something so seat small as a seatbelt, or a seatbelt or a light, can always turn into something bigger. It's a cloudy Monday... In other words, you're fishing. ...the afternoon in Cheshire, and interceptors Chris Bucko Buckley and Chris Hawkins are parked just off the A34, keeping their eyes peeled for law-breaking drivers. We're just looking for people committing offences that basically will contribute to people being killed or seriously injured in collisions, so like mobile phones, seatbelts, 
Keep our little beady eyes out, open and do. Uh, I think we'll get something, will we? After 16 years on the job, Bucko knows all the county's best places to spot dodgy motors. But today... Oh, the other car. I'm curious to see what's going on. His usual banker isn't paying out. I'm starting to think this isn't the best place here. I'm going to move because that light's not very good. Bucko hits the road to find a better place, but immediately spots another illegal and potentially dangerous motor. This, I think it's a Sigma up here. It looked like he got tinted windows at the front, which, again, are illegal. The Silver Estate appears to have tinted front windows on both sides. If they don't let in enough light, then that's illegal. Sometimes when they're tinted at the back quite heavily, it can make the front ones look tinted when they're not, but we're just going to have a quick chat. Having a tinted rear window is fine, but front windows must let in 70% of light or more to be legit. Hello. Hello. Are you OK? So the reason I stopped you is because your front windows look to be excessively tinted, so I just need to do a quick check of them, that's all. But... Oh, that, yeah. If the windows are too tinted, it's going to cost this driver... You can see through it. It doesn't look bad. £60, as long as everything else is in order. So you bought it a week ago? Yeah, about a week ago, mate, yeah. Have you, have you got your insurance to say with you or not? Yeah, no, mate, it's on the no. traders, mate, on the traders' policy. It's on the traders' policy, is it? Yeah. All right, do you want to have a quick seat in the back, then? The driver says he's insured on a motor trader's policy, which allows him to drive any car for business purposes. Bucko runs a few checks. OK, what's your name, mate? Uh, Nathan Hayes. Hayes or Hayes? Hayes, H-A-Y-E-S. What's your date of birth, Nathan? Uh, 27th. Yeah. Six. Yeah. 62. 62. 82, uh, sorry. Eight. <laughs> Bit of a eight, difference. Yeah, 82, yeah. I was going to say, you're doing well for 62. <laughs> Right, what's your home address, Nathan? Cromwell Street. Okay, what's the postcode ST? Uh, ST6. Yep. I don't even know what the postcode is, mate. Right, okay. And you say it's on a trader's policy. Yeah. I just figured out what the postcode was to my house, so don't even feel bad. A trader's policy, yeah. Right, okay. Who's, whose policy is it? It's on mine. Yours, and what do yeah. you do? What do I do? Yes. I'm a mechanic. All right, who's it with then? Uh, obviously, we'll need to just. If you haven't got your insurance with you, you'll have to ring them, you see, to clarify it, that's all. Right, um, I don't even know, mate. You don't know who it's insured with? No. That's it. Just play a little bit, just play dumb. You got it. Is it insured? It is insured, mate. Yeah. But you don't know who it's insured with? Uh, I did it online. Maybe a company online. Right. It's all a little bit suspect. The driver doesn't know the name of his insurer or his postcode. And initially, he said he was born in 1962, meaning he's in his 50s. But then, after a moment to reflect, he has a confession to make. I've got no insurance on it, mate. You haven't, have you? No. Right, so why lie to me? I don't know. Yeah? Yeah. To make you work a little harder, obviously. I might look thick. Yeah, yeah, sure. But I'm not, yeah? Sorry, mate, no. Right, well, we're not going to worry about the windows then, are we, at this point, then? Right. Knowing the driver's been lying, Bucko thinks he may have been telling a few more porkies. Have you got a full UK driving licence? I haven't got a licence. No. You haven't ah. got a licence either? No. Nope. Have you got a provisional? No. Nope. Are you disqualified as well? I am. It's cooked. Why are you driving? I'm dead. If you have an accident and you kill someone, you've got no insurance, you've got that driving licence. I know, mate, I know. Yeah? What a day. Right. You're not wanted for anything, are you? No, I'm not, mate. No. Oh, thank God for that. At least we've got something then, yeah? Yeah. So these, are these your correct details? No, they're not. They're not? No. Why have you given me those details then? Just... Should we start again? Yeah, okay. start again, mate. Bucko restarts by getting his real name and address and then has a few more questions while he runs some checks. You're going to see the car, aren't you? Unfortunately, mate. Well, let's, let's get all this sorted first, find out who you are. So, right, yeah. what's your home address? He got a address. Because I take it that 16 Cromwell is not your home address either. Do you take cannabis or anything like I that? I do, mate. I smoke what you got. You do? I can smell some. When did you last do some? Uh, this morning. This morning. Right, OK. Just do a quick drug wipe as well on you. Is there anything else? This is not going to be good. Well, <laughs> talking to you. Stick your tongue out. That's it. With the wipe Keep lit, quiet. Bucko has eight minutes to find out about any more fibs the driver may have told. But having lied about his name, his age, his address, his insurance, and his driving license, 
the man has told the truth about one thing. He has smoked cannabis recently. Imagine bending down like this on the car to see to talk to your partner, and then when you stand straight up, you're the same height as when you was bent down. That's tough. That's moving different. I ain't got no time. I'm like, well, it's whatever, but it was just funny. It was just a funny observation to see him slouch down like this. Just, the man has told the truth about one thing. Then stand up and be the same height. <laughs> ah. Oh, God, Jesus, take me to. Take me now. He has smoked cannabis recently. Oh, man. I'm crying. Well, that has it's indicated funny. cannabis, but if you only had some this morning, it was going to. It was always yeah, going to, wasn't it? So. The driver's going to the nick, and his car's going to the pound. Oh, well. Seized by Cheshire Police. They really put Basically that on your car? Basically a sticker so that when it gets recovered, everybody can see that uh, we're out there taking vehicles off people that have got no insurance or no driving licence. Hopefully a little bit of a deterrent. There you go. I was just about to say no creases. <laughs> what was quite a minor offence has now turned into something a lot more serious, so just shows. Got to be in it to win it. Back at the station, the man took another drug test and this time passed, so wasn't charged oh, nice. with driving under the influence. However, he was convicted of disqualified driving and driving with no insurance and imprisoned for 182 days. But he's also facing a far bigger punishment than... They lock bro up for six months for this? Oh my God, he must have had a court appointed lawyer. How? Bro, nobody in this whole episode has got time and you did? Man. And any court could dish out. Obviously, he's got his disqualified driving everything else. That he's forgotten his missus' birthday today. Oh, just said that's the worst offence out of all of these. Yeah. She's going to have your uh, nuts for garters, mate. <laughs> Still six to come. Months. I, hope I ain't trying to hear that. Uh, six months. Come on. It's a windy afternoon in hey, Cheshire, <laughs> and interceptor Steve John O'Johnston is getting his motor ready for a long shift on the county's roads. A clean car's a happy car. But a gleaming bonnet isn't all that's required. Loud noise. Steve also has to check he's carrying everything he'll need today. Bro, how do you wash your car and leave 75,000 leaves on it? Like, what? Hey. Uh, just making sure the lights are working. Uh, making the sure the uh, appropriate amount of kits in here. So we've got uh, the stingers in there. We've got plenty of cones. We've got some uh, signs. Uh, we've got blood alcohol kits. Should we need them to go to the hospital? Uh, and just general stuff that we will need when we're uh, out on patrol. Should we end up at any RTCs or road closures, scene closures? With everything ship shape and Bristol fashion, Steve's ready for the off and gets a call before he's even left the station. So, we've just had notification from North Wales that there's a stolen vehicle coming towards us, potentially down the M56. So we're going to head up into the area and uh, see if we can intercept it. We've got several vehicles heading that way, potentially looking at doing some sort of T-pack tactic on it if we get it to, in contact with it. 16-year veteran Steve is an advanced T-pack driver and an advisor on tactical pursuits. And he'll need to use all his motoring skills to... I'm still shocked, bro. Got six months. <laughs> like, God. Today, as a traffic jam That's has forced crazy. him onto the hard shoulder. Whenever we try and use the shoulder, we try and use it with caution. So we'll be using uh, the hard shoulder just to make some progress up through this traffic. There's still no sign of the stolen car. It hasn't been spotted on any cameras for a while. But then another urgent call comes through. 56 westbound. Three vehicles involved. She's broadcasting now an RTC on the M56 where we're potentially going to be going. That's why this traffic's all at a standstill. Uh, we've got a seven month pregnant lady who's requested an uh, ambulance to be checked out. So if we come across this bump, we'll uh, stop and uh, assess it and potentially deal with it then. Steve's now got a decision to make go after the stolen car or to the smash. 
the ops for the latter, given that lives may be at risk. Yeah. The stone's not materialised onto us yet. Uh, it's potential for it to be stuck in the tailback, but at the end of the day, we need to go and uh, see what's in this RTC first. We'll uh, make a risk assessment. Res reservation of life. We can resume quite quickly, we will do. We're going to be on top of this RTC shortly. Oh, so ah, there it is. Yeah. Three cars are at a standstill in the fast lane and the traffic is still on the move. And there are three people in the central reservation. It's a dangerous situation. Yeah, this could get Steve now has to check if the people involved in the smash, particularly the pregnant lady, are injured. Hi guys, you okay? Not hurt? You okay? You okay? We've got reports someone's pregnant. Which car's yours, that one? Mine, so... We're, we're on your own? Yeah. Um, what we'll do is try and get everyone onto the hard shoulder a minute, so we just ask you to stay here. Steve's first job is to get the three people across the motorway to the safety That's of the hard perfect. shoulder, which means he has to stop all the traffic. Even for an experienced interceptor like him, it's a dicey job. Over there. Guys, you'll walk over this side for me. Now the people oh. are safe, Steve's... You just checked your car. You got some cones in there. Put them out real quick. Next task is to get the cars onto the hard shoulder to stop Cheshire's motorways grinding to a standstill. The pregnant lady's car is OK to drive. I ain't gonna lie. At least he's not taking a piss because normally these cars would be moving slow and they wouldn't even have did this in America. It would have been right there where it was. <laughs> He's concerned about the other two, which have sustained more damage. The middle car, which's taken a battering, won't start. Right, this is now dead. Yeah, do you want to come and push? Don't get in, you're the heaviest one. Well, um, might need a push for this one as well, guys. Now I'm not gonna lie, this is the most I've ever seen a cop in real life or not in real life like do work. Like this is insane. I ain't even gonna lie, I applaud dude. This <laughs> this is the most I've seen a cop do. Now it's just Steve's trusty traffic car to shift. Cheers, lads. Just stand that side for me. And just six minutes after Steve arrived on scene... Yay! It's not moving. The traffic's flowing again. Right. Because you're not having me dinner yet. You sure you're still OK? Paramedics arrive to make sure everything's OK with the pregnant driver. I ain't gonna lie, that's great police work today. I, hey, this is the best officer I ever seen. First thing that went into my head really is you just, like, I panic because you just, you worry about everything. Just like, probably overreacting getting these guys here, but you don't want to take any chances. These guys have checked me over and I, I think, uh, I think everything's all right. With no one injured, the drivers swap details. Got a pen? If not, I'll lend you one of mine. Borrow that one, make sure I get it back, she's got tracker fitted. If you don't get me back, I'll come around and kick the door in. Even though it looks like a fairly routine shunt, Steve needs to make sure it wasn't caused by dangerous driving, which could result in criminal charges. This is the rear end. And that's consistent with what everyone else has said. You've come to stop or nearly come to stop. The middle car's come to stop or nearly come to stop. BMW's not stopped in time and hit the middle car into you. Two of the cars are going nowhere. But hey, don't nobody hit me in Florida. Hey, you know them little lawyers that be on, that be coming on the radio? Like, yeah, call this. If you've been in an accident, even if it was your fault, <laughs> I'm calling. Don't hit my car. Steve is hopeful the pregnant lady's motor therapy. has escaped as unscathed as its driver. Please. No warning lights coming up on your dashboard, which is always a good sign. Bro, a police officer, a tow truck driver, a, a medic, a mechanic. 
So the advice is, yeah, you can drive it, but if it starts to feel a bit funny or you're not happy with it, pull onto the shoulder, ring us, get out and jump over the barrier, and we'll come and get you. But apart from that, I'm happy for you to, uh, to drive on. Though things may not have turned out as Steve planned, he's kept three people safe and the M56 moving. Just a normal day at the office. After all that, it was a three vehicle rear end shunt in lane three. Uh, no one's injured, everyone's insured. We've all got the requisite licenses to drive. Uh, no recorded injuries with anyone, so that's the best bit. Uh, so everyone's safe and well, and it'll be down to the insurance companies to sort out uh, who's going to pay for what, why, why and when. In all right, well, to y'all, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notice. I'm gone.